Today I'm going to talk about celebrity autobiography and biography. And celebrity autobiography and biography is very much like popcorn. You can take a lot of it in, it doesn't necessarily stay with you, and it's fun while you're reading it. First book I'm going to talk about today is Hitmaker by Tommy Mottola. Tommy Mottola, for some people, is Mariah Carey's first husband. For people in the music industry, he's a mover and a shaker. Um, this was a really interesting book because he talks about Sony Music, and he was big at the time that Michael Jackson was recording. And so there's a lot of Michael Jackson stuff in here. So if you're interested in Michael Jackson and you're interested about the music industry, this would probably be a great book to read. I would also recommend the Clive Davis biography, Hitmaker, which we also have. But um, like I said, this is interesting because he talks about his life, he balances it with his work, and there is a lot about Mariah in here too if you're interested in her. Second book is I Got a Name, The Jim Croce Store. And the two big artists from the 70s that are now in revival in music are um, Jim Croce and John Denver. There has not been a definitive book written about John Denver yet. This is written by um, Jim Croce's widow. Ingrid Croce, talks about their life, and they had started out as a duo. It's an interesting story. Um, there's some myths that um, were blown out with this. Uh, she created some myths when he died, and she sort of blew them out with this book. Um, a guy who a lot of people like his music but don't know anything about him, and you'll learn a lot about him and about the struggles of a brand new artist in 1970s music culture. Again, a quick read interesting read, and it makes you want to go back and listen to the music. My third music book is Joni. And this one I actually downloaded from Overdrive and, and read on my computer, but I found a copy just to show you today. And um, if you like Joni Mitchell and you want to know more about her or about her music, because this is mostly about her music, not just about her, more about her music, this is a good book. If you don't know much about Joni Mitchell and you don't know her music, this is probably not a book for you to read. It's um, very intense about the music, about the albums, about the CDs, and so you probably will want to go back and listen to the music as you're reading along with the book. That's what I eventually did, and it all kind of fits in. Um, there's other books about Joni Mitchell out there, I don't think there's been a really good one written yet. This is very good, but not terrific. Okay, so Mick Jagger, Sir Mick, uh, going on tour apparently next summer. So a lot can be said about Mick Jagger, a lot has been written about Mick Jagger. This I really like because it concentrates on the early days of the Rolling Stones, talks a lot about um, Brian Jones and Bill Wyman and Charlie Watts and his relationship with Keith Richards. Not too much about the recent future, or recent history with the Rolling Stones, their breakup and that what caused Keith and Mick to have that four year hiatus. But it does talk a lot about the early days, it talks about his uh, marriages and his relationships, particularly the Bianca one and the Jerry Hall one. It also talks about Mick Jagger. I like Mick Jagger as a person very much from this book. Um, not necessarily I like him as an artist, I like early stones, but I'm not a big fan of the later stuff. But if you are a fan of Mick Jagger, you will like this book, and also you really like him. Another biography that we didn't have that I could show you, but I want to recommend is Rod Stewart's autobiography, which he wrote, called Rod. And I do not like Rod Stewart as a singer very much, um, especially the Great American Songbook, which I feel he's butchered. But um, he... Um, comes off in this book, and he wrote it, and you can tell he wrote it. And with celebrity autobiography, you often can tell when it's a ghostwriter, and you can always tell when it's the person. And Rod Stewart in that book actually talks a lot to the reader, and it's very interesting, it's like having a conversation with him. Okay, brand new book came down last yesterday. I read it last night. It is called Unsinkable, Debbie Reynolds. This is Debbie's fourth memoir. So if you're a fan of old time Hollywood, she talks about the last, really the last 10 years of her life, there was a documentary made about her for HBO that was really, really good. There was, um, she had to sell her celebrity um, paraphernalia. She owned one of the biggest collections of Hollywood memorabilia, and it had to, she had to sell it at an auction. She talked about that. It's a wonderful chapter about what happened when that happened. She talks about her other child, Todd um, Fisher. She talks about the death of Eddie Fisher and the death of Elizabeth Taylor. And now before Brangelina, um, 
the big scandal was um, Elizabeth Taylor, Debbie Reynolds, and Eddie Fisher. And she's outlived them, and so she gets the la last word on it. And you can tell Debbie Reynolds was involved in this book. She may not have wrote, written it, but she definitely dictated it to her ghostwriter. And it was, it's a fun read, and she's, she's a plucky little gal. One of the best biographies that has come out this spring is Twitch Upon a Star, the Elizabeth Montgomery biography by Herbie Pilato, I think is how you pronounce his name. He wrote the definitive book on Bewitched, so he's been a big fan of Bewitched. But I didn't know a lot about Elizabeth Montgomery besides being Samantha Stevens, and this is absolutely fascinating. She is a child of Hollywood. Her father was an actor in the 1930s and 40s, um, Robert Montgomery. And it talks about their relationship. It talks about her marriages. Um, she, the man that um, produced Bewitched, Bill Asher, who just died this year, um, was uh, like a Svengali to her. And they owned the show, and she created the show. And it talks a little bit about Bewitched. Not a lot, but it also talks about all of her other acting. And it was really fascinating to see her career. Because after Bewitched, she really was the queen of TV movies and was getting ready to star in another series based on a mystery writer's book. And I can't remember off the top of my head who that was. But she had done two movies that were highly successful, getting ready to do a series, and then um, suddenly found out she had cancer. And she was gone within three months of finding out she had cancer. Very good book. It's very interesting. And I think if you um, are a fan of Bewitched or just a fan of Elizabeth Montgomery, you'll learn a lot from here. And you'll also learn a little bit about Dick York from this story because it kind of has a follow-up of what happened to Dick York, who was the first Darren. So I recommend this one highly. Now, March of this year marks the 40th anniversary of the first reality television program. And that was an American family, and that showed on PBS. And it caused quite the controversy. This is Lance Out Loud. And this is about Lance Loud, who was the oldest son. And one of the two things that happened during that 12-week um, reality series is that his parents broke up. Their marriage of almost 25 years broke up. And Lance came out. And in 1973, coming out on national television, it just didn't happen. And Lance was a flamboyant character. He um, went on to write articles for Interview Magazine. He was a musician. He had a group. He um, was a filmmaker. He did so much stuff in his short life. And he died in 2001 at the age of 50. And his mother put together a reminiscence from his um, siblings, who are all still alive, from his 93-year-old father, who wrote this wonderful tribute to Lance, and some stuff from her, and then from friends and colleagues and stuff. And this is just basically a reminiscence of Lance Loud. But it kind of ties up an American family. And uh, the one thing about the Louds is they felt they were used by the, the filmmakers. And they didn't really get to be themselves. They were kind of stereotyped into you know the five teenage kids and the parents, and the marriage fell apart. And so this kind of gives a story. And it, they talk about Lance, but they're also talking about themselves. So if you're interested in what kind of happened to the, to the Loud family, this book kind of answers those questions. And it also gives a nice tribute to Lance. And one of the things that Lance wanted before he died was for his parents to reunite. And they did. And so that, that was a nice legacy. So I would recommend this book also. It's a beautiful book, too. It's actually one of our best looking books in, in celebrity biography and autobiography. So those are my selections for this month, and I will see you again.